Well, if you would please go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And then once you find that, you might want to stick your finger in there and back up a little bit to um, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Let's see, those are found on pages. What? Looks like 1,243 for Ephesians and page 729 for the Isaiah verse. While you're turning there, let me pray for the reading of God's word. Father God, we thank you so much for the word that you've given to us. We thank you that you have preserved it exactly as you wanted it. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would teach us as we read. Allow him to help us to understand what it is that we're reading. And most importantly, Father, we ask that we would obey it. We thank you again for uh, the word, and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. So starting in Ephesians, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. In Isaiah, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Well, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen? Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I like it when Christmas falls on a Sunday. <laughs> you know, many of us have our Christmas traditions. I know that some families perhaps wake up with brand new pajamas. And they uh, open presents in brand new pajamas. Or you might have the traditional breakfast that's sweet or savory, whichever it is, but you look forward to that every year. Possibly, uh, I think in many of our homes, we wake up and we are excited to read the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2. And then uh, we sit around the Christmas tree, we open presents. And there is a lot of smiles, a lot of laughter, and a lot of joy that fills our hearts. And then every so often, those traditions get either bumped up or delayed because it's a Sunday. But you know what? I think of no better place to be on a Christmas Sunday than with our church family worshiping the birth of our Savior. Isn't it good to be with our church family in the house of the Lord on Christmas? I love it. What a great way to start this Christmas day. Well, we're going to look at a few scriptures. Ephesians, which Ephesians is not typically a Christmas passage, but I think it fits really well with this idea of being with our church family on Christmas day. So let's look at the first two verses. This is Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. He says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family... In heaven and earth is named. See, we are a family. We, and there's nothing special about uh, the Greek language when it comes to this word family. It simply means family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Our Father in heaven is our heavenly Father. And we have family members who have gone on before us who are in heaven now. And they're still a part of our family. And we have every, all the... Fellow believers on earth today, we're one large family, children of God, and we get to come and celebrate the birth of our Savior on this day. 
And so this idea of family, you know, you've heard it said that people might say Christmas. Well, Christmas is about family or Christmas is about giving. Well, it's really not. Christmas is about the birth of the Savior of the world. And we get to come as a family and worship him. We get to, we give gifts in celebration of the ultimate gift that he gave to us. You know, what I like about this Ephesians verse in chapter 3 is the entire chapter talks about the mystery of Christ. In the earlier verses, Paul is telling the church in Ephesus that the, the mystery of Christ has been revealed. The Holy Spirit has revealed who Jesus is. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. And we as believers in Christ understand this. Not only do we understand who Jesus Christ is, but we understand that, that God had a plan for redemption of mankind, not only to bring Israel to himself, but for all the Gentiles as well. And so anybody that comes to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ understands this mystery that has been revealed through time. Because not everybody understands Christmas. Not everybody understands Christ. I just read a, um, it was an article recently, and I, I wish I could remember the article that it came from, but it was a survey about, you know, these people that were surveyed in the United States and what percentage of them actually believe that Christmas is a religious holiday. And it was still about 60% believe that it is a Christian holiday, but, you know, that's around 40% that don't believe that it's a Christian holiday, which I understand in years prior to that, several years, I can't remember, maybe five or ten years, it was, uh, you know, high six, 67, almost 70% believed that it was a, a religious holiday. So even though as we as the family of God, we understand the mystery that's been revealed, we understand God's plan for salvation, there are many people that don't. So I'm thankful, and I hope you are too, that we can come as a family and celebrate. Because if I look out here, I see the faces of people that I love and care for. And we know that these people love and care for us. And so again, I just cannot emphasize the blessing that God has given this church for us to come together like this and worship the Savior. Because his gift to us was the ultimate gift. If we look at our verse out of Isaiah. See, the book of Isaiah was written about 700 years before Christ was born on the earth. And so I'm sure it was a mystery to the Israelites when they read this or they under, or tried to understand this. But again, like Paul is saying, that mystery has been revealed and we know. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now God is the only one who can give in such a way. We give gifts at Christmas to celebrate the idea of God giving us his son, but there is nobody that can outgive God. God gave us the absolute best gift ever to mankind, and he's the only one that can do that. Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, is the only one uniquely qualified to be given as a sacrifice for our salvation. And what a wonderful, awesome gift that that is. The son was given. And speaking of this son, it says, And the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And he did. He brought the Messiah to us on Christmas Day. Now, if we were to look back at our Ephesians verse that we started with, Paul gives us a Christmas prayer, really. So as we finish out our day today, I know that we're going to go back and spend time with family. We might have uh, dinner plans, present plans, uh, all kinds of plans. Go back to our traditions that have been not really interrupted, but just been added to on this Sunday. And then uh, as we go through those times, though, 
as we're celebrating with our family, I want to remind us to dwell and remember the awesome gift that God gave through his son, Jesus Christ. And so when we look at the Ephesians verse, we're going to go back to chapter, chapter 3, verse 14. And this is a prayer that Paul prayed for, his, for the churches there in Ephesus. And at this point, not only was he talking about the mystery that was revealed and who Jesus Christ is, but not, and then he talked about the purpose of that mystery being revealed was to save the Jews and the Gentiles. But in this part of the, this passage, he's talking about the appreciation of understanding the mystery that has been revealed. And so as we as a church family understand that mystery, we understand who Jesus Christ is, we understand the gift that was given to us, let this be a Christmas prayer for us. He says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with the might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is that width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You see, as the family of God, we understand the power of God in our lives. We understand the gift of his son to us. And we are so thankful for salvation through Christ, and it is he who strengthens us. And so as we continue our day today, we want to have the love of Christ in our hearts and share that with our family and our friends. Paul finishes this uh, passage by saying this, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. One nice thing about being a member of God's family is not only can we celebrate Christmas in truth, but we know that as family members of God, we're going to be with him someday forever because his reign will never end. And our home is not here, but we'll someday have our citizenship in heaven and we'll be there with him for all of glory. And so we ask, uh, or I ask that you would just think about the wonderful work of Jesus Christ on the cross and the gift of him being born this Sunday.